Earlier, we were speaking to Professor Natalie Fenton on the topic of mediated public spheres, um, but we also talked a little bit about uh, journalism and democracy um, and the possibilities that the future might hold for us. In England, I obviously feel we're a lot better off than America, um, who obviously through the lens, obviously through the lens of their media, um, I see a society completely controlled, essentially living a, a big lie. Do you feel that we're equally as uh, equally as uh, in the same situation as them? Uh, we are in a very different situation to America. Um, we have public service broadcasting mm. for a start, which is um, uh, undoubtedly enables a different form of knowledge to be produced mm. and, and distributed. So we're very lucky in that respect, and we because we have a very strong public service broadcasting mm. um, system. But we also have one of the most raucous presses in the world, mm. which is entirely unregulated mm -hmm. and it very heavily dominated by a few huge mega media corporations. So, and, and that leads to um, a, a, you know, the domination of that public sphere by a very few voices, very few very powerful voices. And that's a big problem. And that, that actually, in that respect, we're worse than America. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are quick to shout conspiracy theory. Um, or, um, you know, it's like a deranged, a deranged view almost. Um, are they colluding? Are they... Uh, Conspiracy theory about what? Well, relation um, to what? In, in relation to, you know, the, kind of the large media moguls, the large right. kind of um, figures, a lot of people, when you start talking about um, the control they exert, kind of um, would just kind of push that to the side and say, you know, they're, um, they're not evil. Uh, they're not um, trying to control everything. Well, it's interesting, actually. There's a, I mean, actually go to the Levison evidence mm. online and listen through those many hours of um, sort of courtroom evidence over an entire year of people talking about what it was like to work in those industries, what it was like to act as an editor in those industries, what it was like to be a, a source of news from those industries. And you'll see that it may, you know, it's not that they set out to be evil, mm. That's a, that is a naive and simplistic way of looking right. at it, but that actually the sum total of what they do results in a particular type of culture and practice mm -hmm. of news. And that is about, ultimately, the bottom line is making money. There's some very great quotes throughout that evidence where they say, look, this is it's nothing to do with the public sphere or democracy. This is a business mm. and we're in it to make money. So, you know, once you take that into account, then it's just like any big corporation. Mm. Only the consequences of that are very different because the consequences of a, a, a communication industry, which we get our information from, if it's only churning out a particular form of information, then we suffer. And you know, the response to that, and it comes into some of the talk this afternoon, is that it's fine, don't worry, we've got the internet. Beautiful and bountiful information whenever we want it. Mm. Once you start understanding how that information is contained and ordered online and what's fed to us by whom, uh, in, in what form, then you suddenly realise actually maybe that's not quite as wonderful mm -hmm. as we once thought it was. And, and that is becoming ever more restricted. Do you, do you feel that newspapers should almost come with a disclaimer saying, warning, this might not be real, this might not be true? Because um, I feel part of the problem seems um, to be people's belief in what they read, um, you know, this kind of nice piece of newspaper and it looks all official, it looks all uh, thought out. I, you know what, I've got great faith in the public actually, particularly mm. through all these debates around the hacking scandal, mm. because despite all of the newspaper coverage around hacking and Leveson, which has all been pro-paper, you know, anti what things like hack, the group called Hacked Off are actually campaigning for. Despite that, any polling that we do, over 70% of the public support our approach. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that they're not believing everything they read in the papers. Okay, and how you they it do you have a sense of um, criticality in relation to it? Okay. And that okay. also shows up in all of the levels of trust mm -hmm. around the media. Who's the least trusted people in society? Politicians, mm -hmm. followed very sh quickly by journalists, mm. sadly. So 50 years in the future, 50 years in the future, what would you like to um, see as the kind of dominant, I guess, mentality towards journalism or what journalists would have themselves? You, I think that most journalists start off in their career with actually a very high ethical framework in a sense that they want to do it for all the reasons you and I would think of as good journalism. They want to hold truth 
to you know they want to hold truth to power. They want okay. to actually yeah. really make sure that um, those who hold power are being interrogated, and uh, and that's good. That's a, a great you know, sort of vision for journalism. It should be connected with democratic, a healthy democracy. Mm. Good journalism should be functioning in that way but we have to enable we have to provide the structures to enable that to happen and that means i think uh, encouraging a not-for-profit media which is non-corporate which actually has across the board not just with the bbc and public service broadcasting but actually we have uh, that we would have a government that recognizes that if a media system is so fundamental to democracy, then they have to find ways of supporting it, which will not in cause government interference at all. It will be entirely independent media, but that actually it will be allowed to grow and grassroots journalism will be allowed to bubble up and, and be sustained. Now, at the moment, there's some great examples of small instances of online journalism, but they're very small. They struggle to survive and they're usually crushed by the sort of, you know, the mega corporations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would love to think that journalism would thrive, that there will be a way in which actually um, a, a very varied and pluralistic media can genuinely emerge. And is that realistic? Do yeah, you believe? yeah, I completely believe that's possible. It happens in other places. Why shouldn't it happen in the UK? Mm. You know, there are, um, if, for example, Norway and um, the Netherlands have subsidies for their press and they, they score the highest in all of the rankings around um, uh, press freedom. But that's because they are genuinely allowed to be free. They're not, you know, this nonsense that we get, a uh, discussion we get in the UK, where, look, this regulation is going to prevent press freedom. No, it's going to prevent the power of the extremely powerful from becoming more powerful. <laughs> it's a very different type of notion of freedom. It's an, and a completely alien one in other countries.